I will give somebody a career path to get you from here to here as a trader, and then they'll go off over here and they'll put themselves years behind. Or one day is Thursday, July 25th, 2024, and this is the weekend charts. So what we're talking about, well, current market conditions, I have a lot to say about that. I want to show you a couple things real quick, and then we'll hop into the live charts. Your questions on trading, start top, typing those in now, and you can ask about crypto pairs and also stocks. We'll take a look at crypto first, and then we'll take a look at stocks. So tonight's focus, I want to talk about the methodology to action. I want to do a TFM update, talk a little bit about the downside of trend following, something they don't tell you about a whole lot. Nobody tells you what could go wrong, right? Or how hard it is at times. And for many, many of those secrets, I'm going to focus on one thing this week and one thing only. Stop searching and start finding. And that'll make a lot of sense in a few minutes. Q&A, feel free to ask your questions again now. Uh, there's this claim screen. I thought it was in here somewhere. And again, all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff comes from now and then. There's my contact information again if you need to do a screenshot on that. I do answer my own emails. And my uh, email is daviddavelander.com. And there's all the other stuff. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And thank you. All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. This week, I just want to talk a little bit about the TFM. 10% system, whatever, things start getting iffy, people start saying, hey, what do we do now? As opposed to, which is great because a lot of times, as I often say, people wait until the market's down 30, 40%, and then they ask me what to do, and then it's kind of like, damned if you do and damned if you don't. But anyway, let's do an update on TFM 10% system. Again, these zones in here, uh, Jeff is here tonight. Uh, he came up with the idea that if you drop more than 5%, the market could be in trouble. And that's where he likes to get out. And you can see S&P 500, not quite the 5% yet. So that's the takeaway this week is the S&P still looks okay. Some other stuff, not so much though. So greater than 5%. So this would be a caution right here. That was a bit of a caution. Fortunately, the market came right back. And now we're close to challenging that again. And then 10% or more as is when this red zone down here, or hot pink, everyone look at that, is where you really need to think about getting out. And the premise behind the system, it's in the designer's intent too, was to help you avoid these diaper change moments. And the premise is, if a market's gonna lose half its value, it's gonna lose 10% first. So let me just show you the rules real quick. 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high and close below the 50 week moving average. Again, I said real quick, or as, as I say each week, real quick, because somebody's gonna ask me, if you want to know more, you can go to my YouTube channel or my website, which is davelander.com. But uh, YouTube slash Dave Landry, please subscribe and like some videos while you're there. So sell signal again, close below the 50-week moving average and 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high. And then the buy is when you're within 10% of that 50-week closing high and you have two bars of upside Landry light. So bar one bar two, so your buy would have been back here. So far, so good, knock a wood on that signal. And the next sell would be a close below this moving average because the moving average is below the 10% line or 10% level, however you want to look at that. It has to close below both. If the moving average gets above the 10% zone, then it's just simply would be a close, obviously, below the 10% zone, which would also be below the moving average. Now, NASDAQ Qs, don't look quite as good as the peas. As you can see, we're now pushing deep into this zone here. So we're more than 5% away from the 50-week closing high. And we're not too, too far away from that 10% zone. So like I said last week or week before, at the peak, I had bought, um, well, not at the peak, but back here, we got a buy signal long before the peas. And fortunately, not a sell signal between. If we ask the G's, I put on 100 shares back here at 319.49. And I just checked it and uh, kind of gulped a little bit when I actually saw the difference. So now it's only worth 13,000. That's a difference of 4,525. That's only on 100 shares. So that's with longer term trend following, that's what it looks like. And that's why I have the hybrid approach where I'm taking money off. And if you go in, if you can't sleep at night, go in and watch last week's presentation where I talked a lot about the the giving up of the open profits and the, and the reason we do take those 
partial profits, but there's no money management built into the system. It's just a mechanical system. I don't really follow that many mechanical systems. In fact, this is the only one I've actually taken a trade off of in, in present years. In my prior life, I did a lot of programming. My parents were kind enough to provide me with a degree or the means for me to get a degree in computer science, and I figured I might as well use it. They were a little disappointed, I think, when I when I left the computer world to start trading. But uh, make sure I'm using that degree in computer science. That's why I did a lot of programming back in the day. I wrote thousands and thousands of systems. And it's not as many, it's it's a lot. Believe me, it's a lot. I wake up and write a few a day. But a lot of them are variations on systems. And then 20, 30 years later, I come up with something much more simpler than all that stuff that I worked on. All right, lately I've been doing a series on a million little things that will make you a successful trader in no particular order. Just a brief intro on that. Everybody thinks there's going to be some big epiphany and you're like, yay, I arrived and now I'm a trader and I know everything, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> doesn't work that way but if you are very cognizant of all these little things these minor at least little tiny tiny epiphanies you'll do quite well over time and we'll get to that in just one second the overtime thing so number eight eight hundred seven thousand eight twenty eight stop searching and start finding now kind of backed into something or stumbled into something by accident Hal, who's in my facebook group was asking about getting the reps in, and then he starts talking about what he's doing. And I replied, this is my reply here. And basically what I was telling him is to, to stop searching. He's in that searching mode, and we all kind of fall back into the searching mode every every now and then. I'm kind of in the searching mode a little bit with this intraday stuff because I do really well with it, and then the wheels kind of come off the bus and, and makes me realize that I need to really stick to my forte, which that's why if you go back and watch last week's webinar or one before, that was one of the million little things to stay with your forte. But anyway, channeling Mark Douglas, it kind of got me thinking about the knowledge gap. And I, I haven't found it in his books, but I did see a presentation where he talked about the knowledge gap. And a knowledge gap leaves you thinking that if you only do more, you would not have lost money on a trade and that's simply just not true. Sometimes the best look at setups fail obviously and sometimes a miserable setup can do quite well. Now, if you're taking crappy setups or mediocre setups, and that's a whole nother presentation on mediocrity, don't deal in mediocrity, okay? And Anthony Bourdain said mediocrity is the greatest sin and that's, that's something that, uh, spoiler alert, I'll be talking about at some point in time. I've got a um, really good write up on that. But anyway, back to Douglas, like he said, a knowledge gap makes you think that, boy, if I only knew more, I wouldn't lose money trading or I wouldn't have lost money on one particular trade. And that's simply not true. Now, you need to reach a point where you have found something viable and do that, and then and only then slowly build from there. I've been working on pullbacks for probably 30 years now. So that would be a good place to start. And I'm gonna show you a specific pattern in just one second. Now, a while back, to those of you who are in my Facebook group, I gave away, I'd say 80%, maybe more of my books. I downsized and I started looking at all these books and I used to think it looked cool to have a bunch of books behind me and it's like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, a lot of the books really aren't that great. And after a while, you start reading all these books and you kind of end up with an analysis paralysis. It, it, it's it's kind of a catch-22 situation. You sort of have to read enough books and understand trading enough to understand when something you're reading just simply doesn't work. And sometimes I'll read a book on trading and I'm like, this guy, this guy wouldn't know a trade if it hit him in the ass. And, and you know, not that I'm perfect, believe me, I screw up, okay, quite often. But after a while, like some of these books, they'll say things that simply are true or they'll make assumptions like they're always true and it's kind of like that's not how markets work and that, that's not how any of this works beatrice implied so i said well you know i think i'm gonna unload my books and or most of my books and my wife called me from the post office she goes uh this this is gonna this costs a lot of money this isn't hundreds of dollars you sure you want to do this i'm like yeah 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 and i made a deal with my clients and we had a little contest and um i gave them away Now, to close that knowledge gap, you only have to really do one thing, find one pattern. 
Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And I see it over and over and a whole, there's a whole lecture I could probably do just on reinventing the wheel. And I'll see somebody come to me and they're just hungry and starving for knowledge. And I'll try to show them one pattern and show them the simple money management and some little simple things they could do. And they're like, okay, that's, that's cool. And then within weeks, they're off on some tangent chasing rainbows and people get into a lot of trouble that. So basically I, I gave him a career path Well, I'm saying him, but her too, but I'll, I'll give somebody a career path to get you from here to here as a trader. And then they'll go off over here and they'll put themselves years behind. Whereas if they would just follow something really simple, get that down and build, they would do fantastic. And Linda Rasky, my sister from another mister once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful, amen. And I truly, truly, truly believe it, believe that. So you need to find one pattern, and don't worry, I'm gonna show you a pattern here in a second. You need to find historical examples where it did well. I'm doing that politician thing, don't they? I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Uh, show my age, I guess. Find historical examples where it did well, and then find some historical examples, I'm doing it again, where it failed miserably. And that's the thing that people don't do is play devil's advocate when it comes to stuff. And as I've said before, and it's been several gigs where I've worked myself out of the job really quickly because I get hired to look at a system, figure, you know, and, 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 and possibly trade the system or help somebody with a fund or whatever, trade the system as a technician. And I'd shoot holes in it. And in one case, for instance, you would buy when the moving average turned up. Well, especially with an exponential moving average, the the, the way we were looking at it, or he was looking at it when he gave me the system, was that was one of the rules. You buy when the moving average turns up. Well, the moving average would turn up if tomorrow's price closed higher. And unfortunately, we don't have tomorrow's price. If I did have tomorrow's price, you would never see my fat ass again. Or maybe I'd come by and come back and talk to you a second time. Now, what you want to do is once you've kind of exhausted looking for this pattern historically, you want to find it in real time and paper trade it and then possibly slowly begin to trade it at a very, very small size. Because you'll find a lot of times, as I often preach, to be quite frank, is that the map is not the territory now the other thing i would suggest you do is, is study success and failures okay and by the way when you're looking at these trades and this is straight from my trading service and this is the last i just grabbed the, the bottom half of the spreadsheet or toward the end, the end of the spreadsheet and when you look at these oh uh dave com slash archives that's where you can find these but when you're looking at them, look at what the market conditions were doing at that time. Look at what the sector conditions were doing at that time. Somebody years ago was telling me, why can't you write a book and then show the market and the sector and all that other good stuff? It's like, okay, well, I suppose I could, but I would hope that the person reading the book, if they were serious enough to trade, would take that extra step. And maybe need to put that in the book that I'm working on now, which will probably take me about another 10 years to finish. But it's very important to kind of understand what's what's going on. If the market's beginning to tank, then stuff obviously more than likely won't work or work as well, I should say. So if we go and look at some of these trades, the TARS, for instance, this is one, like I said, last week or week before, I was pretty excited about because I thought it was going to work. And I was kind of shocked when it didn't work right away. And by the way, that's, that's one of those, I wish you had the numbers in front of me, but that's one of those many little things is only take trades that you will be shocked if they don't work and if they don't work you shrug your shoulders you know drop a drop an f-bomb if you want i gotta i can't drop this one because it's i guess i can drop it from a short height it's pretty it's pretty solid anyway so drop an f-bomb if you must and then shout next and move on so you can see this is a pullback obviously 
And it's also accelerating momentum strategy. Notice that it was gradually working its way higher, draw a little trend line below the lows, and then it began to accelerate higher. Then it really began to accelerate higher. Years ago, and, and it's something that I see every now in charts, now in, in charts, <clears throat> every now and then on charts, easy for me to say, is like a one, two, three accelerating pattern. You have like a trend line that goes first gear, second gear, third gear, and then you have some sort of knockout move. And that's kind of a, what I'm aiming for with the accelerating momentum strategy, some kind of serious mo uh, acceleration in momentum. And then the other thing to look at in this particular case is persistency. Persistency is one of the most powerful things, and I know I talk a lot about persistency, but I can't say enough good about it. And a lot of times with the persistency, what amazes me is when, in, back in the day, uh, when I would speak a lot more in person, oh, I do have an engagement coming up in, in uh, San Francisco. We'll talk about that more as it gets a little closer. But one of the things that amazed me is when you look up at these big charts, especially overseas where they do things in a grand, grandos, grandiose manner, uh, such as Italy, that these charts go up, up like 20 feet, these huge screens they use. And you can really see how important persistency is when you see it on a chart that big. But anyway, not to digress, but I would encourage you to take a look at persistency. So we had acceleration here with a nice deep pullback. Now here's NNE, which took off recently. It imploded afterwards, but through a little money management, we did okay. 4 or 5K per 100K. Anyways, it was a trend pivot pullback. It was also the first deep retracement. Trend pivot pullback is where you have a pullback that stalls out and comes back in. It's, a, I'm not going to say my favorite pattern, but it's one of my favorite patterns. Every one of my patterns, for the most part, is one of my favorite patterns, obviously. And then we have K and F. Now, K and F was another first deep retracement. It did pull back quite a bit in time, but... With something like an IPO, especially a hot IPO like this, kind of comes public, takes off. I'm a little bit more lenient with it when it comes to trading. And I'm going to circle back to these in just one second, too. SVM, we talked about last week or week before. You had trend acceleration. Once again, accelerating momentum, momentum strategy. You also have persistency. Persistency, draw a line through as many bars as possible, like we talked about, again, last week at Bandcamp, the pickup sticks, which are linear regression. So mathematically drawing a line through the bars is the equivalent of linear regression. Play around with linear regression. Don't become a slave to it, but play around with these little indicators if you want. Uh, but make sure you're seeing them more as illustrators as I preach than indicators because they don't indicate anything. They show you what's already in the charts. So on top of the acceleration and persistency, when it pulled back, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> we also had a TKO move here. And if you if you can't sleep at night, go in and watch those services like I talked about. Again, DaveLander.com slash archives. And you'll see usually when I talk about a setup, I talk about why I like it. And I also go through the Landry list, which is my daily list that I look to trade off of daily. And I publish that in the service. But when like tonight, for instance, I went through most all the stocks because there was only a few, and I talk about what I like and don't like about it. And usually if it's a, there's a setup, I'll spend a little time explaining the acceleration, the persistency on things of that nature. All right, so I know you're on pins and needles, edge of your seats. What is the one pattern? Well, I've given it a lot of thought, and I think that Landry Light pullbacks might be that one pattern, especially if you're combining all these other things that I just said into them. And that's where, again, you get better. It's, it's deliberate practice, okay? And who is it talks a lot about that? Malcolm Gladwell. And there's another individual that, that he had a bit of a riff with, but if you read both of these individuals, you'll see they're both kind of on the same page. But deliberate practice is not just going through the motions it's looking to get better and that's one of the secrets to success in life is deliberate practice and through deliberate practice you're going to see acceleration persistency all these other trend qualifiers for the trend and few or none against the trend okay so here you have the 30 ema 
And notice you have all this Landry light as, again, illustrated below. So you have about 35 bars of Landry light and you go down to zero when it intersects the line here. And that completes the Landry light pullback, okay? So SVM, we just looked at that. In addition to all those great things I've said, was also a Landry light pullback. TARS, again, nice... Uh, Persistency, nice acceleration, and this is one again that I, I would have been shocked if it didn't work. And obviously, I can't publish this and go, I know this one's going to work because I've been dead wrong sometimes in the past. It's like there is a randomness to the outcome, but as a general statement, when you're finding stocks that are that just go up day after day after day, this is one that just kept coming up in my momentum list every night, every night, every night, every night. I'm like. As soon as this thing sets up, and it was killing me. I watched it from much lower levels. It just never set up. And my methodology is not a perfect one. Nobody has a perfect methodology, by the way. And it won't catch every setup or every uh, every trend, I should say. But a lot of these stocks will pull back nicely to the 30 EMA. Now, years ago, I used to use the 20 EMA, and I'm going to touch upon that in one second. And in case you're you've been around for a while, or you're just checking back in. I'm amazed, by the way, and you know, I guess I'm being a narcissist here, but I'm amazed at the number of people that will follow me for a little while and then go off for 10 years or more and chase rainbows and then come back and realize that, geez, I sure did waste a lot of time doing that. This trend following moron stuff can actually work, and it can actually work quite well. But anyway, so if you're from back in the day and you're just coming back and you're like, what's well, this Landry Light pullback? It looks a lot like Kiss My Goodbye. Well, I think it was in layman's, I called it Kiss My Goodbye. And back then I was using a 20 EMA. And in more recent times, as I've said quite often, I've kind of fallen in love with the 30 EMA. And I know you want to party with me. And as I often preach, one small rule, keep you out of a lot of trouble in stocks, and crypto, and commodities, and Forex, and whatever the market comes along would be to never, never, except in maybe some rare cases, buy a market that is below the 30 EMA. And that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble, especially in more recent times in crypto and the SHYT shit coins. But you can see we had 60 bars of Landry light. That's a beautiful trend. Again, it was killing me watching this thing go up day after day. And then finally it pulls back and you have zero when it intersects the moving average. Landry light is just simply lows are greater than the moving average. That's it. And the little histogram below counts the number of bars of Landry light. It's not magnitude, okay? It's not like it's a moving average uh, convergence or something upon the price and you know, and some of that might have some merit. I've tried a lot of that stuff, couldn't make it work, but maybe you can make it work, but before you do that, just look at something like Landry Light pullbacks and think long and hard about that and maybe just trade that for now until you get get your reps in. Like Hal was talking about, the aforementioned client, he was having trouble getting, getting his reps in. Well, now's not a market to get your reps in. And I'll touch upon that in, in one second too. But anyway, so that TARS, was a Landry Light pullback. The KNF didn't have the EMA, but eventually it did before it triggered. If you squint your eyes, you see this little orange 4203. So that's a 30 EMA, and that's where that is. And it did pull back to the 30 EMA based on that. So technically, that's also a Landry Light pullback. So nearly all of these, with the exception of NNE, which did not have a Landry Light pullback, I'm sorry, we shouldn't have a moving average because it wasn't public long enough. So that's, let me just see how many that was. One, two, three, four. I think it was about five stocks missing. So four out of five were Landry Light pullbacks. Now I know the MME was only 20 bars, but it's still a, a Landry Light pullback nonetheless. And again, as I said a second ago, the original pattern was with the 20 and then that kind of morphed into the 30. By the way, the, the Landry Light came from years ago and let's see if this is one it's hard to see it here but this is this is one bar here but let's do it where it's more clean and just imagine just like the tfm 10 percent system you need two bars of landry light 
So bar one, bar two, little system would be to buy above this high, okay? And that's the 220 EMA breakout system, which could also be the 230 EMA breakout system. And that's a silly little system. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush out and trade it mechanically, but I'm just looking at this chart for the first time, at least with, with through that lens. And you can see back here, it never got away from that moving average, okay? And then it finally gets away from it. And then in this particular case, and believe me, breakouts won't always work. That's why I'm a pullback player, because pullbacks will work more often than breakouts, at least statistically, because a lot of breakouts are false, especially nowadays that everybody's got a computer on their desk and they can see the breakouts. Maybe years ago, uh, even even uh, in more somewhat more recent modern times, this is when the turtles were out there, breakouts probably didn't fail as much. They had a very simple breakout system. They were buying 20-day highs. That's pretty much it. With a few caveats. And they absolutely printed money until they didn't. But that's another story altogether. But anyway, you can see it broke away nicely, nice landry light, and then it pulls back to the 20 EMA. So if you need one pattern to trade, it would be landry light pullbacks. And by the way, as I said in that reply to this gentleman, find a one pattern, but then find all those characteristics of other patterns that I like to trade, like the trade pivot pullback, an accelerated momentum strategy, and persistent pullbacks, and TKOs. Find all those little... I don't want to say tweaks, characteristics that are also Landry Light pullbacks. Jesse Livermore, I, I found this by accident while I was doing my, I was actually um, asked to speak uh, at a conference where the, it's going to be like old school, new school. And I was asked to teach or preach or whatever, teacher, preacher, lecture on old school. They wanted me to cover Jesse Livermore, so I'm honored. But he once said, it was never my thinking that made the big money. It was always a sitting. That's not the one I wanted. Okay, here, there it is. <laughs> my kunash just slipped out. There it is. Nope, that's still not it. Money's made. Okay, don't give me time. These other two are pretty good too, okay? Money's made by sitting, not trading. That, that's a good one. We can use that one too. You always get something good out of living more. Different ways of, of looking at that one. One is once you catch a trend, hang on, okay? Um, doesn't happen often, but every now and then we'll ride out a trend for about a year, sometimes two. Doesn't happen that often again, but we will stay with positions a, a fairly long while. And we've got a couple in the portfolio we've been in for quite a while. And knock on wood, we survived this little downturn. Not that there's any guarantee we'll, we will continue to survive it, but so far so good. But anyway, the point I wanted to get to here, when I grabbed the slide, I just saw this part. This is the one, this is what I want. Don't give me timing, give me time, okay? And you can read into this in, in, in various different ways, but once you capture the elusive trend, okay? Dave, stop making it sound so elusive. Well, it is, okay? It's streaky, as I often preach. You'll print money, and then you go back to sitting on your hands and waiting and grinding it out and getting chopped up, chopped up, and right about the time you're ready to quit, markets take off again. Don't give me time and give me time, okay? Give me time to wait in less than ideal conditions. Again, now is not the time to get your reps in trading. Now's the time to sharpen your stone, okay? Is that the right way of saying it? Sharpen your knife, sharpen the stone. But anyway, give me timing. Don't give me timing, give me time. So give yourself time to wait for conditions and i know it's hard we put all these pressures on ourselves and we have this time acrasia thing time um how does that what's the what's the time i forget that the word i'm looking for i have to put it in post but we 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 view time in in, in certain ways and i think we put this pressure on ourselves the market is not, doesn't give you a paycheck. And Livermore actually talks a lot about that too. And you you just sometimes have to wait for things. I mean, I wish the market did give me a paycheck. Like I said, a couple of weeks ago, when I was talking about all the extraneous influences, like I'm just getting hit with a shit ton of expenses. And in the meantime, you know, daughter's calling up, uh, hey, uh, I miss you guys. Can you send me a plane ticket? It's like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, so, 
give yourself time, time to learn. Don't waste time chasing rainbows, okay? Once you have something that's pretty solid, and you've done the research, and you've had at least 100 setups, some that worked, some that didn't, you played devil's advocate, all the things I just said, then yeah, as I said earlier, slowly add to that and maybe do a, a tiny bit of that grail hunting if that's what you want to do. But don't get caught in that maze. I often do a presentations where I show the, the trader's journey, which is very similar to the hero's journey, right? And you can end up in that all is lost moment quite easily and you get off your little trader's journey and then go on that grail hunt and that can delay your success between one and 20 years. I don't want to call anybody out, but I've had somebody who emailed me for 20, 20 years and they still don't get it. They're still off chasing rainbows instead of trading Landry Light pullbacks or doesn't have to be my pattern because he's 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 never given me a dime as a client. <laughs> so go off and go off and do your own thing, but find one little simple things. You've been doing this or trying to do this for 20 something years. Just find one thing and do that one thing. Reminds me of City Slickers when uh, Curly figures out the secret of life. Curly's the old gristled, um, I'd say an old salt, but he's an old cowboy. And he had the City Slickers, which are up there to try to figure out life and take a break. And they're like, what's the secret of life? It's like your finger, you know, he holds up one finger. It's like, well, one thing, you know, just do one thing, but do it well, okay? So why are you waiting to get your reps in? By the way, get your reps in, in case you don't know is your trades getting you have to get your reps in. and one of the things that i suggested to, to hal earlier was a trade crypto and right now a lot of that trading would be breakout trading and right now crypto is actually not working but a while back crypto was blowing and going and it was a great way to get trades in. you were getting three or four trades a day even position trading you hit ipts and your money management and it was all kind of rocking with docking right well the the crypto markets go from bull market to bear market the cycles are just like nuts okay it, it happens within a, a month or three weeks and sometimes one week or one day so i wouldn't i wouldn't bet the form in crypto just put a token amount in those those accounts if you want to do that and get the that's one way to kind of get the reps in but as hal pointed out that's mostly breakout stuff at least it has been in more recent times so yeah so that's that that's not working either but while you're waiting to get your reps in don't trade to be trading okay you want to study success and failures, okay, and go through those archives. Not that I'm the grand poobah. Believe me, when you start going through the archives, you're going to see everything warts at all. He's like, boy, these are some great trades. And it's like, why the hell did he do this? You know, when you reach a point where you're like, why the hell did you do this? And, and feel free to call me on it. You know, I might look at it and go, yeah, shit, I don't know. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I felt pressure to put a, a setup out there for the clients. Maybe I was bored because I hadn't had a trade in a while. I don't know. You know, maybe there's a reason why I picked that crappy setup, or maybe it was a fantastic looking setup, and we're seeing things differently. I don't know. But go through those, and then really study one pattern, as I said. And while you're getting your reps in, study trading psychology and, and neurology. And, and one thing I was thinking about right before we went live is is the great thing about the the neurology is we all have a similar, uh, a, the same, I should say. Uh, Abby normal brain, right? We all have this same sort of brain, unless you have an Abby normal brain, I should say. And that all works the same kind of way. The amygdala has us like freaking out. Everything's a big, huge deal. Everything's going to kill us. And that keeps us alive. Because if you didn't have that fast acting amygdala, back in the caveman times, you'd get eaten by, you would get eaten by a saber toothed tiger. You hear like a, like a stick crack or something like, oh, I better get the F out of here, you know? <laughs> But in nowadays, that freaking out, sitting in front of a screen, freaking out when the market's going to get you, that doesn't do you any good. And that that fast acting amygdala fires up the rest of your brain, starts pumping adrenaline into your system and all this other bad stuff like cortisol. And that can really, really muck things up. So the great thing about studying neurology is you don't get, unless it's really directly tied to trading, but you don't get as much of the of the bad information because it's talking about something that's a little bit more of an exact science as opposed to trading the trading psychology book sometimes they'll talk about things again that that simply don't work or they'll talk about 
like it's it's a it's a fixed thing you do push a button get a peanut and as you know the markets don't work that way and if you've been trading for a while of course you know that if not i just told you and maybe study a little personal development like i said malcolm gladwell good stuff to read when it comes to the liver practice i used to read a lot everything that he put out i've i've haven't kept up with him in more recent years uh, what's his name? Irely. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Israeli guy. A uh, very interesting story uh, with this guy. Uh, he got blew up by a flash grenade. And um, very interesting. Uh, what's his book he, where he talks about uh, the, the the pain he went through and his psychological makeup to get him through this, through the shots he had to take and everything. And uh, very, very uh, tough situation. I think he had a, a like a bad form of hepatitis from all the skin grafts or everything and and his personal journey through all that but uh he's a really good he's really good when it comes to psychology and uh what's his name the Dilbert guy had um he had a pretty good book a while, a while back how to fail at everything and still succeed so so read you know maybe kind of go off a little bit of a tangent master key system that's a little it, it you go to daveland.com books to read uh books dash two dash read for uh, almost nearly all of these uh master key system it's a little esoteric it's kind of like the science of getting rich by waddles master key system handle or haddle or something it, it's some of those really old ones like that are in public domain but i'd like to just have a hard copy myself um but i'm telling you this in case you wanted to read them for free so study some of that personal development i'm I'm kind of into esoteric a little bit, you know. I kind of go like, yeah, right. But it's funny, like when I actually do what they say to do, like affirmations, it it kind of it almost scares me a little bit because some of these things do come true. So just find a way to to keep yourself busy in the interim. And you know, uh, now that I'm back in the gym in a in a serious way, I, I always joke about my annual workout. I haven't missed one in years, but I actually. It's going to be hard for me. I know I missed one. Uh, I think I had a cold a while back, and I was pretty snotty, and I, I didn't want to um, infect the gym. So I think I missed one or two days with that, although I really wanted to go. But I was like, uh, you know, they, they're going to notice that I'm kind of snotty, especially since I've made friends with a lot of people there. But anyway, long story endless, I don't think I could handle this business if I, if I wasn't exercising every day. I don't know. You're probably thinking – Big Dave's telling me about exercise. You know, look at this guy. But, you know, I still got a bit of a, still pretty big around the middle, but um, I'm also pretty huge too, believe it or not. So Bitcoin got whacked earlier today. And my hope with Bitcoin, and, and I haven't given up yet, but my hope with Bitcoin would be that it would trade independently of stocks. And for a while, there was a, uh, thank you, Frenchie, keep coming. Uh, there was a, a positive correlation with stocks. So stocks went up, Bitcoin went up, stocks went down, Bitcoin went down. But now it seems like Bitcoin is, is might be diverging off from stocks. So that would be a very exciting thing. One thing that concerns me about Bitcoin now is it is becoming more of a mature market in that all these derivatives are making it more efficient. And also it's creating a shit ton of paper Bitcoin, as I say each week. And I know I've said it a nausea, but all the gold in the world, and I need to confirm this, will fit in one Olympic size pool, maybe two. So uh, back when I was in the country on six acres plus, I could have fit all of the gold in my backyard. Now it's a little bit more smaller area. So I'm not sure if I can fit all the girl, gold in the world in my backyard, but you get the idea. There's only so much. But if you add up all the futures contracts and options contracts and ETFs and all this other stuff, it's like you scratch your head a little bit. It's like, okay, that's that's a lot more than there is physical gold, right? And I think the same thing is unfortunately happening with Bitcoin, especially with a lot of these disingenuous exchanges out there that may or may not be actually buying Bitcoin when you buy Bitcoin and put in your account. All right, let me just check in my brethren over here real quick. 
All right. Okay. We got some, got some things coming. Okay. Uh, be patient with me on YouTube. Just give me a second to catch up to you. Let me, let me uh, go through crypto and I'll catch up with you guys real quick. Okay. So let's take a look at Ethereum because that's another one of those big boys. Ethereum for a while was really doing well against Bitcoin. Bitcoin usually beats out Ethereum, but Ethereum did okay for a while. We take a look at Ethereum to Bitcoin. You can see it's just getting absolutely cream. So Bitcoin's a denominator, Ethereum's a numerator. So obviously you could you divide one by the other, and it's just uh, the 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 bottom number is getting bigger than the top number. Anyway, so Ethereum is underperforming Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the shitcoins real quick. As I've said ad nauseum, and I, I really haven't been paying attention lately, and I should. But when all of these coins are really flying, especially Bitcoin's banging on new highs and all, a lot of the coins, are, as they're more com commonly called shit coins, can really go. And sometimes you could just sort them by relative strength, and relative strength being percent change day over day, and just by the strongest pair. So that one looked okay, whatever that was. That helium? Yeah, so you can see this isn't too bad. If you if you want to take a position, you know, get some reps in, so to speak, it's a nice Landry light above the 30. It doesn't have any overhead supply for a while. But again, like when the market's really blowing and going, you just buy the strongest ones. And speaking of the 30, as I preach nearly every week, and as I said a little while ago, never buy a market. It's a general statement. If it's trading below the 30 EMA, and just the random one I pulled up here, okay, is a dollar and change, right? Would it first drop below, dollar five, first drop below the 30 EMA? It wears it out, 29 cents. So lost over 70% of its value. So lately, there hasn't been a whole lot going on in, in Bitcoin and in, uh, crypto, I should say. Truth be told, like I said last week, uh, or, or two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you, you have to do your homework even when you don't want to or you think the market is not even worth it. And I I probably missed the pairs recently because I haven't really been doing my, my homework as much. I do when I think about it. And it's another thing. I should say next week, make a list to make sure you do all these things. But I probably should keep CryptoBubbles.net up on one screen at all times, which is kind of a cool thing, by the way. And uh, YouTube guys, I'm coming to you next. So crypto bubbles, share real quick, no affiliation with any of these websites. Except that uh, I used to provide content for, well, I still do. And then uh, I do have an agreement with Telechar. But uh, crypto bubble, something that uh, one of you guys showed me, which is really kind of cool. And see, helium, we just talked about the helium. So if I had to buy one, I'd buy the heme if you had to buy a shit corn so that actually looks pretty good all right let me uh let me check on my questions real quick all right we got matt from australia checking in fantastic okay you have some ideas on how you can put some money management around the tfm as an alternative to exit 50 week moving average matt um the only thing i would do it's like i i don't want to to mess up the the purity of the system for lack of a better word oh, okay that's a i had the wrong symbol sorry uh but as far as the money management i i, I think you could possibly do is once you're up a significant amount take off half of your shares and then close your eyes and forget about it and let it go now i hate to use the word hope but hopefully i don't get stopped out and if you go in and look at some prior presentations i've talked about how much money i've given up along the way and fortunately i haven't gotten stopped out yet knock on wood come in <laughs> okay let me let me try to get the right that's a good right symbol sorry my, my glass i might, might have to go up a prescription huh opa So hopefully that answers your question, Matt. Um, I, I wouldn't, and I think the reason I said don't, don't bastardize it too much 
is because it's a really clean system, sort of clean system, where you have a very specific set of rules. I think if you start messing with your exit rules and everything, you kind of could end up mucking up the system. You'll get a you end up with a different system, okay? And it might be better, it might be worse. You want to noodle with it, fine. But what I would do is I would add a little little money management in that maybe you take some profits off. Option Panda. You guys know what these guys do? I have no idea. Uh, Frenchie. Is that, that's OPA? No. No, no, no. Notice a long tail. So this is pretty thin. Let me see if I can find another one. OPA, USD. Yeah, uh, no, uh, well below that 50, that 30 EMA, uh, long tails on this. Yeah, avoid that at all uh, costs. Let's hop into stocks. All right, let's take a look at the P's, S&P 500. It, uh, if you have any stock picks, start punching them in now. And again, you two people, just give me a second to catch up to you. S&P 500, it's been in a bit of a spill as of late. The 50 EMA, the 50 simple moving average, I should say, on a daily chart, You'll probably notice I don't often plot that until unless it's relevant. And when the market begins to slide like it has lately, it's relevant, okay? It's worth taking a look at. Let me just show you the weekly real quick. As you saw earlier with the weekly, we're still in a pretty darn good trend. And this is where you, you have to occasionally see the forest for the trees. Don't ignore what's happening on daily because it's going to turn on the daily first. Although I was kind of shocked that the TFM 10% system had a sell signal during the pandemic, as I've said a thousand times, where the market began to take the pandemic seriously, that is. And that signal triggered on a weekly chart before the daily bow tie trigger. But you can see the bow ties are coming together. We could bow tie to the downside. I don't like the sharp angle of these moving averages. When you have a really sharp angle into the 50, that's usually not a good thing. Or no bueno, as my Spanish brethren, brethren say. But you can see we're now two days below the 50 simple. Nothing magical about that, but it's usually not a good thing once you drop below that 50 simple. Also, what do I preach? What did I preach tonight so far, right? Never buy a market, as a general statement, that's below the 30 EMA. And right now we are below the 30 EMA in the P's, okay? So let's see how it all shakes out. But this is not good so far, at least. And the downside follow through is a little concerning that we had today. NASDAQ Composite, look at a little uglier. One thing I was feeling sort of good about was that the prior leaders were still doing okay. And these new leaders, as we'll look at in one second, financials and banks and home builders and a few other areas were starting to do pretty good, become new leaders. And the old leaders were still leading. It's like we we almost had the the market firing on all eight cylinders. Almost being a keyword in that sentence. NASDAQ Composite, again, getting whacked in here as of late, two days below the 50 simple. And the bowtie moving averages are coming together. When they cross over and then you have a rally, it's it's what happens next that is important. That's one thing that I've been talking about quite a bit. Let's just clean this up real quick. And yeah, keep the picks coming. We'll have plenty of time tonight to get to all of them. We should be able to get to all of them. Okay. So again, we're below that that 50. And then, like I said, the angle of inflection is important, okay? Once you bow tie, if the market goes straight back up, then we dodge the bullet, okay? If the market kind of gradually goes up a little bit or even sharply for a day or so, but then begins to stall out, that would complete the bow tie pattern and that would be a bearish thing. So we do need to pay attention to that Remember, I'm a trend follower. There's a, a lady in the gym, and, and I can't, it's hard for me to try to explain to her what I'm doing. Um, mostly because people have been taught wrong all these years, right? Uptrend, downtrend, sideways, right? But most people don't understand that. And they think 
actually get out of the market because of geopolitical reasons or or, or things like that. And maybe those are valid reasons on an individual basis. I have a friend of mine that was not happy with an outcome a while back, a, a political outcome, and he wanted to bail out. I'm like, market's making new highs, you know. <laughs> if, just because you don't like it doesn't mean the market cares, right? It, it doesn't matter. But anyway, what happens next is important. If we kind of just rally up a little bit and roll over, that could get pretty ugly pretty quick. Now, the, the great thing lately, again, this is the, the eight-cylinder thing, is that the Rusty, look at this, just kind of took off it here. And for the most part, it's hanging in there. It actually ended up higher today. So maybe we'll get lucky we have this sector rotation. And as you know, and I learned this from, I never think of his name on the fly. It'll come to me as soon as in the, in the presentation. But a uh, guy from the NASDAQ, and Dorsey Wright, he works with Dorsey Wright slash NASDAQ. And uh, he gave a really good presentation a while back and, uh, in person. And he was talking about how momentum becomes value and value becomes momentum. And if you'd never want to make any money in the world, buy into a 50-50 momentum slash value fund, okay? So what he's saying by that is, for instance, the banks, okay? Look what the banks are doing. The banks are starting to act like, Momentum stock, okay, and, and momentum stocks are kind of crashing in here. Now the the mags, these were the this is the magnificent seven. I forget exactly which ones is probably Nvidia, Amazon, Google, and uh, a few others, right? Seven. They was doing fantastic. Tesla's in there, I would guess. But now you can see it's beginning to crack, and this gap here is not a good thing. That's no bueno. But you can see that we're two days below the 50. It's been pretty much imploding as of late. This could set up really quickly as a potential short. Now, there are some strong areas in there. Take a look at defense. Although it, it failed yesterday miserably, it came right back today and closed at all-time highs. Banks, as I said a second ago, as you can see here, doing fairly well. Now, one thing that's been kind of concerning me lately is that this market has been tanking and uh, I think it was yesterday, on a day like yesterday, everything got whacked. And it was kind of a throw the baby out the bathwater type of moment. My, my hope, by the way, with the market is that all of this is just a big shakeout, okay? A market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people. And it'll also do the obvious, not all the time, but the it also do the obvious in the most unobvious manner. So we are still in a really nice longer term uptrend, but then all of a sudden, shorter term, if you're looking, if you're right here, right? Which you have to pay attention to, don't get me wrong, again. But shorter term, we're kind of imploding, and that's the market doing its job and knocking out the nervous Nellies. Three weeks ago or whenever it was, I wish I'd have written it down because it was a bit of a kiss of death. I might have said something to service about it. I hope I did. But some gentleman was telling me in the gym that he takes a fixed amount out of his accounts every month to live on, same amount every month as income, so to speak, right? And every time he checks his statements, it's always higher. It, it, it never goes down. I'm like, oh, shit. That's probably like, uh, <laughs> it was probably uh, this day here that he said that. God, I wish I could remember when he said that. I wish I'd have written it down. It might be in my morning pages. But that's a scary thing when you start counting on the market to always be there. Base metals have been imploding as of late, and commodities have been imploding for the most part as of late. That should help somewhat with inflation as these things begin to implode. There are long lead and lag cycles to these type of things, though. So don't get too excited just yet that those things are dropping. Silver has been absolutely whacked in here as of late. So that's certainly a bit of a bummer. I mean, it was on a pretty good run for a while. It looked like those radio guys were right. It's like I heard one a while back. And I know that I've got the name of the company, but I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. But his thing was, I don't know if you're like me, but I can't afford to lose 30% of my money again. It's like, okay, well, take a look at the long-term goal chart. 
you would have lost half your money in goal, right? And then goal has underperformed for many, 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 many years. They make it sound like goal is the greatest thing ever. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm kind of a bit of a silver bug, gold bug, or can be at times. I do have a tiny bit of silver, okay? <laughs> don't come to my house and bop me over the head. You're going to be very disappointed, believe me. But I do have a tiny bit of silver. You know, maybe the shit hits a fan. I'll have a few little rounds or whatever. Uh, the preppers will tell you uh, silver dimes are the thing to invest in because if you got a silver bar and you want to buy some, it's be hard to chip off a piece of silver bar. But you give them a silver dime, which might be worth fifty bucks or a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks of shitheads fans, so you could buy your uh, groceries. Real estate doing really well. See value becoming momentum. Uh, real estate's going straight up in here. Nice little pullback. I hate to say it, but maybe we'll find some setups and some REITs. Biotechnology, another area defining gravity. I don't know what's going on with biotechnology, but it's fantastic. And it, it tried to rally today. It tailed off, but it's still at a pretty massive rally nonetheless. A couple of areas in here, and we'll get your stock picks. Home builders, again, as I said earlier, are doing pretty good. Recently broken out. So far, so good there. But then you go back to some of the tech that was leading, like telecom, and look what's happening here. We could bow tie to the downside fairly soon. We're within about two or three days of a bow tie to the downside. Financials back to the upside. Value becoming momentum, maybe. Recently broke out, so for a pullback. So some areas are still looking pretty good. Now, if all if the financials come back in and the home builders come back in, and some of these other stronger areas, banks, etc., then we might have a problem. And of course, if we start getting bow ties to the downside, and other things. So. I wouldn't freak out just yet, but you do want to pay attention and, and you don't want to throw caution to the wind. Okay. You two people, I'm coming back to you right now. Let's see if I can find you again. Um, BITQ for Frenchie. BITQ. Okay. Um, that's a crypto ETF. It actually looks okay. Um, my only concern is you can see it did kind of break out and it came back into where it broke out from. I think that looks okay. I personally wouldn't buy it because I don't like a market that breaks out and then pulls back into where it broke out from. Now, when you're looking at a setup, you also sort of need to look at the lens of what it is, through the lens, I should say, of what it is. Like if you're looking at a silver stock, for instance, that, that one I showed a little while ago, SVM, was actually kind of an anomaly. Normally, a silver a setup in a silver stock doesn't look that good. Uh, they look a lot more choppy and wide and loose. And so these Bitcoin-related uh, and crypto-related stocks, I should say, can be a little wide and loose. It looks okay. Um, and then maybe if crypto could trade uh, with a negative correlation of stocks, something like this might be okay. But I would look at some other stuff out there. I think I took it off the Landry list, but like Iren might look a little better. No, I took it off the Landry list because, yeah, it's beginning to fail. So scratch that one from your list. But this was a, a stronger stock that it pulled back that was set up that looked a little bit better than, than some of the other crypto. Okay. John wants to know about NATL. Yeah, that looks good, John. Um, John's a resident IPO expert, so I'm not shocked that he found – an IPO to look at. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like the way it came out of this base. And so far it's pulling back and it can actually pull back slightly deeper and it has adequate volume. So I, I like that. A little bit deeper pullback, maybe. Uh, maybe let's say just by chance I have the 20 in here, but that would be about right. The 20 EMA would be something to watch, but good eye on that one. Okay, all of gold in the world as of February, 2024, equals a cube with 74 foot sides that's see that's bigger than i thought jeff that's that's pretty big but i might be able to fit that in the backyard if i can go up 74 feet uh let me see no nope, i don't have 75 feet i can stick it in the woods by my house <laughs> 74 74 74 feet well that sounds that's a little bit bigger than i thought but that's still that's still think about the size of the world and percentage wise, how much of the world that is? That's crazy. Okay, let's see if we get uh we could get here. 
All right. All right. No more questions there. That's good. All right. Let's take a look at uh, BITQ and ATL. Okay. Any more stocks you guys want to look at? Thank you for the update on the goal, Jeff. Cool. Matt, did I answer your question on the TFM system and some ideas on that? Feel free to noodle with it. Um, one thing you, you'll find is less is more. I actually tried to simplify it even further, you know? Um, who was it, Einstein? Make something as simple as it needs to be, but no further or something like that. Uh, simplicity is the is the result of a long, arduous journey. I hope I said that word right. Uh, not the beginning. And I don't know who said that, but I'll look it up in post. But that's a good quote to kind of live by when it comes to this trading thing. Okay, I think that's I think that's it. I, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Anything unanswered, shoot me an email, daviddavelandry.com, or if you're in Facebook, in my group, obviously bring it up there. Uh, see all you guys and girls tomorrow on Facebook. Everybody else, have a fantastic weekend. I hope to see you all again next week, and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.